thank you so much uh, for inviting me here. Uh, I'm no expert on this. So uh, when you introduced me an expert, I was cringing a bit. So disclaimer right up front that it's not an expert talking to you, but I surely am passionate about uh, advertising and marketing, and I've spent many years uh, doing this. And I'm surely passionate about, you know, especially as an agency, being a brand custodian on behalf of our clients. And I think as uh, the whole digital ecosystem has evolved, one of the questions that keeps popping up is uh, the promise of digital being better understanding of audiences, the promise of digital being better ways to connect with them, target them, have a conversation with them, uh, reduce the amount of wastage that happens versus uh, all of the media. How is this promise really played out? I think that's a big question that we keep asking ourselves all the, every time. And, and I, th I think I, I love the fact that the, you know, my conversation with you is on a subject which is not tech-led, but it is more a philosophical conversation, if you ask me, which needs to find solution in tech and the way we work. So let's spend a little bit of time on how really you know, digital advertising and even specifically programmatic has evolved over the years. You know, probably about 15 years ago, slightly more than 15 years ago, programmatic was all about automating the way we send our requests for executing campaigns to advertisers. And uh, that's where it started off. There was no audience. There was, it was all about making it easier to be able to send your requests and IOs to thousands of advertisers at the same time, websites those days, not apps. And from there on, we started getting better sense of audiences in the digital environment. And we went on to move to start buying audiences based on their attributes. Uh, and then came the whole idea of being able to buy the audiences and discover price at a real-time uh, basis. And RTB came in from a price discovery perspective. Uh, and to enable all of this, the ad tech infrastructure evolved. But as that infrastructure evolved, we also saw the proliferation of significant amount of ad fraud. Uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And ad tech evolved further to try and catch and make sense of the ad fraud that's happening. And honestly, this is a cycle. Uh, somebody wants to you know, game the system tends to be a few steps ahead of all that tech that we have built over the years. And in most of the times, you're playing catch up. So it's a challenge. And what does it do finally for advertisers and brands? It adds costs. And that cost keeps ballooning. Where do these costs lie? Is it really transparent, the whole ecosystem of what an advertiser pays versus what they get? These are some questions that I'm going to pose, really. Do I have answers for everything? Maybe not. But are these questions extremely relevant for us to answer? Absolutely, yes. So let's look at some data. I think what, are the, what do we mean by transparency in programmatic? And these are some questions that pop up into our minds every day, right? So how much of my investment is really going into working media? I think this is a question that we keep asking as brands. And it's a very important question to answer. Uh, I'll come to the numbers later. Is it, is it about knowing real audiences versus bots versus made for advertising, you know, websites and apps to fakes? How much of my investment is really being spent on some of this? It's about knowing which publishers where my ad is actually being, uh, you know, uh, finally uh, brought, you know, broadcast or you can call it viewed. Uh, as we started buying audiences, this understanding of where my ad is finally visible, that has diminished. And I think that's scary. You surely want to know what is the environment in which your ad is being actually displayed. So this is a question that constantly keeps popping up. Also because, are these environments brand safe? We keep 
hearing about how an ad was placed next to content which was objectionable or content which should not be present next to a particular category of a product. Uh, who is viewing these ads? Is it being viewed meaningfully? A 0.5 second exposure, is that really an exposure that I should be paying for? Is a one second exposure, should, be, should I be paying for? I think with the jargonization of the whole ad tech space, we have forgotten basics of media planning and we have forgotten to ask these questions. I don't think that changes regardless of what you do in digital or what you do in programmatic or what you do with ad tech. Ad tech is a tool. It should enable me to answer these questions. So let's not stop asking these questions. Also, we talk a lot about the data which drives our decision making on targeting uh, audiences, connecting with those audiences. What is the fidelity of that data? I think I'm targeting a male consumer. What is the fidelity of the data which tells me that the consumer I'm targeting is really male or not? I think I'm targeting somebody with an income of above a certain you know, income, annual income range. What is the fidelity of the data which basis which I'm making that decision to target a particular audience and bid for that audience. I think this is a question mark, a very big question mark really. Now let's talk about the numbers a bit. Right? So any guesses on what is the 64% really? Any guesses in the room? Uh, no guess is wrong, but you know the general direction in which I'm going. Galat nahi hai, sab sahi hai, sab answer, haan, yes. Okay, so you're not, you're not wrong, but about, if I am spending 100 rupees as an advertiser, only 64 rupees of that technically actually gets invested on buying the impression. There's about 36 odd rupees within the system, which as an advertiser, I have no visibility on. Now, Understand, as an advertiser, I'm also paying a transparent ad tech fee, a DSP fee. This 36% is over and above this DSP fee that I pay as an advertiser. Where does this go? Who does it go to? Why should it go? Are some questions that we should answer, right? This is not true of many other media. So why should I be having this opaque, you know, workflow and path in this media, shouldn't the cost be transparent? Yes, ad tech costs money, but that's why you have a transparent cost that you charge. I think this is a very big question that advertisers are asking and constantly pushing back agencies, platforms, the DSP ecosystem. And I think as an industry, it's a responsibility to make this as transparent as possible. Uh, you know, now the routine, I'm going to quiz you on these numbers, right? So, so what is 23% really? And this is a conservative estimate, but there are numbers which are wildly varying from this 23%. But what do you think this 23% is? So yeah, about 23% of all investment that we today make, and it's not necessary on programmatic, but on digital environments, is fraud. So now, now start doing the math. 36% of the spends that I'm doing are not really going into working media. 23% of the spends that I'm doing are being, are some form of fraud where potentially it's not, let's say a real audience or potentially it is an environment which isn't built to attract advertising. So again, no real audiences of worthwhile nature out there. And there are other forms of fraud, right? So 23% of the money that I'm spending is anyway going on frauds. So when you start doing the math, you start realizing that a lot of the money that as an advertiser you invest is, is not really going into working media of any form, or even if it goes into some form of media, that media turns out to be some form of a fraudulent media. Now, how, how much do we know about where those ads are getting this? How, much of, how many of us actually end up spending time going through every line item to see where is the ad got, where is the audience finally being bought from? 
Which environment is it? Is it brand safe, not brand safe? Yes, we have tech which allows you to put block lists, white lists, all kinds of lists to enable you to avoid potentially harmful environments. It does, but we still end up buying a lot of impressions, a lot of audiences in environments which are not safe for us as a brand, in environments which I may not want to be present in, and we may not know of it. So it's opaque in many cases. In some cases, we probably know a little bit of where it's going. Uh, when I talk about meaningfully viewed ads, there's a lot of conversation on what you should be paying for. What kind of an impression should we be paying for? What kind of an audience is a real audience? What, how much time they should they spend? And we end up spending for half a second sometimes or paying for half a second of a view. Is that view really meaningful? Do you think you can really communicate any brand message in that kind of a time? I think these are questions that we have to answer and we have to set it right. Otherwise, we're going, on the, going down the path where the credibility of the whole ecosystem is at stake. And I think it's bet because you might be wondering why am I you know, asking these questions when digital spends are going through the roof. That is the only medium which seems to be growing worldwide. Every other medium seems to be decreasing in terms of advertising spends. It is growing because audiences are there on digital environments. That's the reality. But how we reach those audiences is not transparent. So let's not kill the golden goose. Let's ask these questions and try and answer them and do it transparently. Let's be bold enough to answer these questions. Almost 50% of the impressions, and this is our own study, uh, we have figured out that almost 50% of the impressions that we pay for tend to be not meaningful. They tend to be fleeting, so fleeting that you get charged for something which probably in the blink of an eye vanishes for the consumer. And that's, again, a lot of wastage. So you start adding all the wastage that I've listed out there, you start wondering what really works. So I'm really spending a lot of money trying to get nowhere. And what about the data? How many of us really spend time looking at the data that is used to programmatically target an audience? Where is the data coming from? What is the source? Is it being ethically sourced? Is there consent behind the data which is powering a lot of our, you know, cohort making decisions and targeting decisions? How do we know that the consumer that I think I'm targeting is really that consumer? Again, it's very opaque. Most of the times we don't know. And I'm not sure, in fact, I'm sure we don't have enough tech to answer this question right now. Actually, my, I'm here to only ask questions, not give too many answers, because I think we'll all have to collectively find answers here. But let me spend a little bit time on what we're doing as Group M. I think one of the projects that we started working on almost six years ago, globally and in India as well, is a little bit of now tech jargon here, right? Still, it's English. Uh, supply path optimization is something which is very, you know, strategically important for us. Because what it does is it allows us to ask these questions. Who is the publisher on which you're finally buying the audience? How do we reduce the steps to actually reach the publisher? Today when you start actually mapping the steps to get to the final publisher, sometimes it's almost six to eight steps. How do we take it down to probably one or two steps? How do we get to the source of the audience directly? I think that's a question. And a lot of the supply path optimization, the time is actually spent to build this ecosystem. Uh, SPA also enables in some form to help us build transparency in the ad tech costs. The questions I asked in the previous slide, we try to answer those questions and make it transparent. And when you make it transparent, you're walking in with your eyes open. You don't, feel, you don't feel cheated. So I've just listed three things. There's a lot more that goes behind it, but conceptually, these are three questions that we keep asking when we work on supply path optimization. And a lot of 
our partners are in this room and you collaborate with us to help us get there. Data fidelity. Uh, I, that was my last point earlier, right? And honestly, we talk so much about data today. We talk so much about how data is the next oil and there is so much power in data. I agree, there is a lot of power in data. But if the data is not high fidelity, it leads you on the wrong path. If the data is not high fidelity, you think you're taking a decision which is going to give you a certain outcome and you don't get there. If the data is not high fidelity, you end up making strategic mistakes in the way you want to reach your consumers and the kind of outcomes you want to drive. And you end up wasting a lot of money at the end of the day. One of the things that we've tried to do is uh, IAB has got you know, publish certain data transparency labels. Some of these are here. It's a lot more exhaustive. But we try to question every source of supply and every so from a data perspective, and I say supply, I mean data supply, from these angles, and ask whether the data that we are using to activate a campaign, whether it's coming through the DSP or whether it's our own first party data, because you can make, go wrong even on your first party data. You think that's the closest to you, but we can go wrong even there. So that's some of, something that we are focusing on. There's a separate work stream within Group M globally and in India, focusing on working on data and trying to make sense of the data in a manner where we try to make it as high fidelity as possible. Then we've published Group M standards, which we adhere to for all our clients from a perspective of brand safety, from a perspective of viewability. Uh, how long should an impression be actually visible? Uh, how long the video should play if it's a video uh, impression? These are standards that we have published and these standards that we have published are basis what we have seen in tests as working for brands. And these standards are a lot more stringent than the the industry published standards. I know sometimes it's a pain when we are working with our partners and publishers on some of these standards and we expect them to follow it. But in the long run, brands, when they see the results coming, when they see that the money that they're investing is working hard for them, they, they try to build that trust. I think in the previous session we were talking about trust. A lot of this is important to help build the trust. And finally, this whole issue of verification, is the ad really played, not played, where did it play, how long it played, the whole tech that goes behind it, that's something which we're collaborating with a lot of partners to continue to build and develop. Honestly, these are areas which are, I feel, of strategic importance. We tend to get lost in jargons, we tend to get excited by a lot of shiny new toys that come in, but we tend to forget basics and tend to forget asking basic questions when we get into all of this. Let's not be enamored of what's around us. Let's, let's play to the strength of the tech that's coming our way and leverage that tech to deliver to answer some of these questions and that will lead to building the trust and that will lead to building the transparency that we all seek. So that's it from my side. A lot of questions, few answers, but I'm hoping that it'll get us galvanized to really wonder about these things and take some actions in whatever little way that each of us as individuals we can and as organizations we can. Thank you so much.